Good morning. This is back with uh, Pilates, and uh, I'm Mary, for those of you who may not know me. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off, and actually I was just reminded um, that uh, any of these exercises you can do from a chair. And when I teach exercise in person, it's, it's easier to actually uh, give modifications. But uh, if you know your cases, so you know your situation, what your body can do, please modify accordingly. All right, this morning we're going to start with our shoulder roll and using the four positions that we think about when we do this. So we're going up, forward, down, and back. Keep those moving. I'd suggest a slower move so that you're really feeling the different points. And at no time are you straining, but just seek out those different positions. All right, now let's roll it back and continue circling. And one more time. All right, let's release that. You can step a little wider if you like, and we're going to reach up and over, keeping the arms straight if you can, and other side, up and over. So you're getting kind of a nice little stretch here and the arm is straight. Really, most of the reason why uh, we're doing this is to get some range of motion through the shoulder and the upper back. So now you're gonna to reach toward the outside of one knee, and then toward the outside of the other knee. And when we do this, we're not twisting from the lower back. Any movement is coming from the middle of the back and upper back. Let's do that again two more times now that we know what the flow looks like. Across the front and across the front again, and then toward the outside of the knee, moving through that middle upper back. And one last time. The cross or the outside. All right, and let's shake that out. All right, let's just sweep the arms up, down a few times. Again. And last time here. Good. All right. Let's reach the arms forward. So they're going to be at about shoulder height or a tiny bit lower if you've got any neck or upper back issues. And then you're going to reach those fingertips forward. And when we do this, we try to keep the shoulders down. So sometimes when we reach forward, they'll want to come up and kiss the ears. Put the shoulders down and reach forward and then reach just your shoulder blades together. Try to get your shoulder blades closer. And then we're reaching forward and back. A couple more times. The arms are just hitchhiking along for the ride here. We're not getting any movement in the elbow. And put that back together and shake that out. A release I like for this one is simply to bring the elbows back and then hands flat back. And keep on doing it. Get a nice flow going here, a nice rhythm, feeling the shoulders release. A couple more times. And again. All right, let's shake that out. Let's go back to our window washing. I don't know if you remember this one. It's a little interesting, shall we say, but you can get a nice wide stand because you're going to grab your two big sponges right in front of your hands and you're going to reach to the outer edge of that window up above or on the other side and bring it back. Your hips are staying stable and facing forward and the movement you're getting is coming through the upper, middle and upper back shoulders. All right, let's take that large movement in the other direction, reaching out as if it's a really wide window pane. And one more time. Bring that back in, shake it out. All right. 
Let's bring one arm forward and we'll do a figure eight with this arm. So the eight is actually going to be lying sideways. So the bulge here and then over back. And keep on really picture that figure eight so that you can draw it through the air. Putting lots of movement through that shoulder. So you'll find here, just try a smaller, flatter eight. See how that feels. And then really make it an eight with lots of big circles on either end. And one more time. And bring that arm down. Let's bring the other one forward and starting here. So when we're reaching back, we're really opening up across the front of the shoulder. And when we're bringing it forward, we're actually stretching the back of the shoulder. Getting lots of movement here. Don't forget to breathe through this. Maybe find a pattern that can work for you. And let's do two more times. And I lost count, so we're going to finish right about now. Bring that down. Really relax the shoulders, shake them out. Let's roll forward as if um, we're somebody who's looking very intently on their cell phone. So you're going to roll your head forward, you're going to roll your shoulders forward, you're going to soften your knees, and you're going to round that lower back a little bit. Doesn't matter if you're staring at your cell phone. And then come up out of that, get some nice posture in place. Shoulders are down, shoulder blades are back a bit, fingertips are pressing toward the floor. Ears are in line with the shoulders, are in line with the hips. All right, let's do our bad posture mode again. And let's come up and press down and shake that out. Let's move to the feet. We're going to uh, get a little bit of movement through the toes. And so your feet are hip width apart. And let's just start by moving all the toes on the floor, whatever pattern works for you. Now, let's drop the toes on the floor. See if you can spread them a little bit. See if you can get a little bit of distance between the toes. A little bit of pressure toward the front of the foot to maybe press into those spread toes. Not a lot, just a tiny move forward and come on back to have weight nicely placed on your heels. Release the feet and then lift the big toes only. See if you can get a little bit of clearance between the bottom of that toe and the floor. And then put the big toes down and see if you can lift just the little guys without rolling your feet or your knees together too much. You'll probably get a little bit of movement that way, but just see if you can get those toes to work independently of the big toes and put them down. All right, let's do some balance work today. So first we're going to shift the weight to one side and the side that's supporting you is going to have a bit of a popped knee, a bit of a soft knee and nice strong glutes as you get ready to bring the leg up and point forward. Up, back, up and to the side, up and back and up to the back position, right back here and bring that up and back. We're gonna move the same side three more times. Here we go. Up and point. The slower you go, the more it's gonna challenge your balance. And let's start that again. Going forward, if you can bring your leg up with the move, you'll be introducing a little bit more movement through the hip joint. That position here. Let's do that one more time. Remember to stabilize on this side. It's going to support you as you go forward. Back up and to the side and back and to the back position. And bring that back. 
Before we go to the next side, let's just drop one knee and the other. Some movement through the pelvis. Release any tension you might have built up through the shoulders or the neck. It's not helpful. All right, shift to the other side now. So take a moment to make sure you're carrying the weight through your whole foot, that you're feeling the weight as if, um, well, your heel is certainly carrying some of the weight as well as the front of your foot, uh, sort of between the big toe and the next toe is, is where you want to securely land that weight. Now get ready, soften the knee, tighten the bum and go forward. And back. To the side. Back. Back position. Let's do three more on the same side. Nice, slow, purposeful moves. We're going to do two more rounds here. The side that's supporting you is nice and strong. We're making sure the hip doesn't waver out to the side. And here we go. Last time. And back position, returning, and done. All right, that standing leg certainly feels it. Well, let's drop one knee and the other. Okay, another balance exercise. We're going to simply, the move is this. Uh, we have done it before, so it should be a little familiar to you. You're gonna walk forward and then you're going to step back except that you're going to spend a lot more time in the air as you go through those two positions so going forward lift the leg spend some time in the air before putting it behind you and continue with this move if you can maybe take a look down and see if the other foot is staying in a more or less straight position it might be trying to waver out to the side, in which case just maybe align it a little bit. There we go. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit more. Now, and back. And one last time on this side, nice and slow as we go forward. And bring that back. And bring it back to position. All right. Release that, and let's go to the other side. So always take, always take a moment to get your supporting leg in the right position. So when we're ready, let's go forward and back. And repeat this. I tried to look at the screen, but I lost my balance. All right, think about what the standing foot is doing. As you're moving through the position, try to make sure you're keeping equal weight through the foot. And two more times, take this one forward. Lots of air time on the way back. And let's do that move one more time. And bring that back. All right, release one and the other. Let's move into some squats. So I should have mentioned earlier in the game um, that you might want a ball handy. Um, if you don't, uh, rather than go too far to look for one, just find anything that you can put between your knees and, uh, and squeeze. You might even just, uh, I don't know if a small book would work for you, probably not quite, but a cushion, your rolled up towel, anything like that. If you don't have it, don't worry, we can mimic it. So the ball goes between the knees, just above the knee joint, actually. 
we're going to give just a little light squeeze on that ball to keep it in position and keep the, the hip, hip width apart. So here we go into the squat, reaching forward with the arms, the bum goes back and the back stays straight and the neck stays in line with the body. And come on up. This time, actively squeeze the ball as you go down. Think about reaching that bum back and come on up. Let's repeat these nice strong moves. Maybe go a little lower if your body is happy with that. Pressing through both heels as you come on up. One down. And when you're coming up, you're trying to keep equal pressure on both feet. So we're remembering to squeeze the ball on the way down. A little squeeze here. Let's do four more. Here we go. See if you can go a little deeper. Two more. And last one here. And press out of that and release. All right, put that ball aside for a moment or whatever you were using. All right, let's just do um, a back lunge. Um, our objective here is going to be to stretch the um, the front of the thigh, uh, the hip flexor area, and the quads will stretch a little bit as well. So we're going to just keep your arms wherever you want to. Uh, you're going to reach back. And when you get back here, adjust that foot maybe back a little bit more and lean forward. If you want, you can bring your arms up to make it a little more challenging. Try to press that back heel toward the floor and come out of that. All right, let's go to the other side. Bring back. Bit further back if you want. Get a good long stretch here. And come out of that. Let's do a few of these at a bit of a faster pace. You may not go as far back. Don't worry about it. Moving from one to the other. Seeing how that feels. Trying to navigate the body. And you're going backwards. It can be a bit of a trick. Two more on each side. Last time, each side. And let that go and relax the legs a little bit. Dropping one knee, drop the other. Let the pelvis just move a little bit. All right, let's do some roll up and roll downs. So we'll do a few of them. Uh, and then we'll end up down on the mat on hands and knees. Or if you're working from a chair, you can do the moves from there. So. As always, feet are about hip width apart. And um, let's just practice a little bit first to get the heels up off the floor. So that's the only move we're going to do right now. So making sure you're carrying the weight across the whole front of your feet as you just lift the heels. And down. If your body stays in alignment, it'll be easier to stay balanced with the heels up. So if you think about when you come up, about keeping the ears over the shoulder, or another way to think about it is to give a little chin tuck and maybe act as though you want the back of that neck to be touching a wall. So here we go, let's just lift again. And down. All right, this time the arms are gonna come up with us and we'll do the full roll down. So arms are coming up straight, heels are lifting. 
holding for a little bit and then release the heels back to the floor lower the arms check the chin in soften the knees and begin a very slow roll down beginning with the neck upper back slowly slowly moving through the middle of that back and coming down your knees are soft to allow for a better rounding through the back. They can be bent as much as you want them to. Take a deep breath in here. And as you release that breath, slowly build your spine back up. And bring the shoulders back into position. Bring the head where it belongs. And let's take that up again. Heels are up, arms are up, ears are over the shoulders, and put the heels down, arms down, up the chin, soften the knees and roll. Deep breath down here, release the breath, come back up. Always starting from the bottom. I'm doing it in reverse sequence from when you went down. All right, this time we're going to reach up. Heels are up, arms are straight. You can put just up here, the arms are straight. And you're slowly going to bring that down. Nice, slow. Oh, when you get down there, you can make your way down to the mat on hands and knees. All right. So if you're on hands and knees, your fingers are going to be spread really wide on the mat. Your hands are going to be under your shoulders. And your hips are going to be over the knees. So you'll find as you move through this, maybe your body might have a tendency to move forward and that'll be really hard on the wrists. So come on back and you're looking for a nice four point position here. All right, let's just do a few cats and cows this morning and then we're going to do thread the needle. So let's push through the hands, wrap down the back and the eyes. Maybe push the bum forward a little bit. Get a nice rounding shoulder blades and nicely spread across the back. And then release that. The chest kind of falls through the shoulder blades a little bit. The shoulders stay away from the ears. And you might think of the bum just naturally curling up a little tiny bit toward the ceiling. So, uh, we don't want to force an arch in the back here, but we're just letting things drop. All right, pressing through for cat, breathing out for the cat, breathing in for cow. So if you think about your shoulder blades going wide, for cow, and shoulder blades coming in. And as you know, you can do this exercise from standing as well. You replicate the cow position by pretending to have a great big beach ball and looking down at it. And then releasing that and standing tall with arms pressed down. All right, let's go to uh, threading that needle. So what you're going to do here, I'm wondering which way you're going to see best. I think if I take one arm, make sure you're nice and strong on the other arm and then thread it between that hand and my body. We're going to rotate the upper body and reach that hand away. You're going to try to maintain equal weight on both knees. So we're avoiding the body tilting over to the side because that'll cut into the move we're trying to get. So we're just trying to rotate as if we're rotating around a rotisserie spit, and then reaching those fingertips. All right, come out of that move. 
and the arm can come straight up into the air, opening up through um, probably the underarm in front of the shoulder. Let's come back and rotate again. Reaching those fingertips, really looking to get some movement through the spine, middle of the spine, upper back. Try to stabilize the hips so we don't feel the move at the base of the spine. And come out of that. Arm comes up. And let's bring it through again. And come on. Let me just check. I thought I'd written a note about something I wanted to do here. Oh, right. Let's do one more on this side. Uh, because I wanted to introduce a bit of a breath to really get some movement through the, the ribs. So let's do that again. That arm is going to come through. You're going to hold this position and take a really deep breath in so that you feel movement in the ribs, especially on the lower side. So here we go. Feel some expansion. The ribs will also fill out to the back, or the lungs will fill out to the back, pressing the ribs there. And release. And come on back. All right, let's just take the weight off the hands for a moment. You can sit back towards your heels. Arms can stretch long if you want, or if you really need some uh, TLC, bring them to the side and just kind of flop them here. Hold that a moment. And then let's come on back and let's do thread the needle on the other side. So the arm comes through between the hand and the body and you're just rotating through. Think about the sternum as being the main point of, of movement here and reaching that hand through. Equal weight on both knees. Come out of that and the arm is going to go up and open. Let's do that again on that side. And with this, this time we're going to take a deep, take a deep breath in. Really feel those ribs move and come out of that, open up. Let's just do one more time on this side. Let's go through. And come on back. And bring both hands down and sit back towards your heels, grounding that back. Let's think this through again. So to get into that shell stretch that we were just doing, uh, ideally we want to kind of start in a cat position. So we're nice and rounded and hold that cat back as you come back. Another way to think about it, if you've got a ball handy, you can put it between your thighs and your belly and roll your body over that. So let's reach forward. Let's reach both hands over to the right hand side. So just walking them over, stretching the fingertips of the left hand a little bit forward, and again, a deep breath in here. Hands come to center and over to the other side. Again, fingertips of that right hand now, reaching a little bit forward. Deep breath in. And bring the hands back to center and come on out of that. All right. We are going to move into some abdominal exercises. For, uh, for the core exercises, when I say abdominal, I, I mean the back muscles as well, because when we're working these uh, in Pilates, we're also working the back muscles to keep them in balance most of the time. All right, you may want a pillow or a towel or something under your head for these. Coming on to our backs. All right, feet are planted. 
we are going to bring one knee up to tabletop and bring the other one to join it. So again, do a little check and see if you think you've actually got tabletop. Uh, we want to avoid bringing the knees too close to the chest or we want to also avoid rolling the lower back into the floor. So we want to keep the spine in neutral. And by having this 90 degrees here, the, the core is really working. The back is also working to keep you in that neutral position. So let's bring one leg down and the other leg down. Let's just repeat this move. So we're gonna get into a bit of a flow going here. One leg to tabletop, the other one to tabletop, first one down and second one down. I find if you're doing this from the chair, it's much uh, safer on the lower back to just do uh, one leg up and one leg down. Other leg up and the other one down. All the time paying attention to your core strength. But if you're on the floor, you've got a little bit more support here and you can bring both up to tabletop at one time. So think about bringing that belly button toward the spine as you're doing this. That'll help keep the whole core strong. It'll help you work those deep muscles as well. Let's do four more of these. And all the moves are slow. Returning as well as bringing them up. Getting some nice pause time here with both knees up at one time and down. Let's do one more. All right, you can relax, whatever feels good. I like to bring my knees into my chest and roll a bit. Release my lower back. Got a little compression happening through the hip flexors. All right, you're going to plant the feet. And one arm is going to go long overhead and the hand will be kind of in a sideways position so that your thumb would be pointed toward the floor. So one arm goes there, other leg goes out long and low, keeping the core nice and strong and straight. Bring those two back and you can move it to the other side. This exercise is exactly the same in the chair as it is on the floor. And we're slowly moving again from one side to the other, keeping that core in a nice, straight, strong, pattern. If you want to ramp it up, uh, you can. <laughs> and here is how you would do that. You would bring one knee to tabletop, bring the other one to tabletop, and then keeping that as your, your uh, default position, move from there with one leg out long. You can still keep it high if you're just getting into this new exercise. And bring it back. Other side, and back. You choose what's safe for your body, what's a challenge for your body. And we're going to do two more times each leg. And finishing off here. And bring those knees in. And relax. All right. Let's have, let's bring the feet and knees together this time. So we're lying on the floor, the back is nicely supported. And your hands can be on the floor, palms facing the ceiling. You're going to drop one knee over to the one side. The other one is going to stay in the exact same position. And then bring that knee back to touch. And then drop the alternate side. 
and back. Moving from one side to the other, only opening as far as you can without rolling the hips over. So the hips are, you're, you're keeping equal weight on the hips. The leg is dropping open and coming back. And you're trying to keep that other leg from moving. So the whole time, you're keeping your belly button pulled towards your spine to keep those abs activated because this is both a hip exercise and an ab exercise. And breathe. Two more times each side. And last time. And over here. Good, and maybe stretch that out long. Right. Let's do a little bit of exercise for the oblique muscles. Um, going to plant the feet. Hands are going to come behind the head. You might want to move your pillow out of the way. Bring your hands behind the head and your hands are going to hold the weight of your head. So your feet are planted to start. Bring one knee up towards your chest as you lift your body and uh, not pulling on the neck. Thinking of lifting with the chest leading. The head and neck are staying in line. And then when you're up here, you're moving that shoulder toward the opposite knee and back. Let's make the next move just a little more fluid as we come up, do that little twist, come back to straighten and then bring a head down. Head comes down every time and you're alternating side to side. And only coming up as much as your abdominal muscles will carry you um, and not pulling on the head. As much as possible, the head should be resting in the weight of the hands. Do that again. Untwist and come out of that. And again. All right. Let's stretch that one long. That one, if you're not used to it, can be, can take a little bit of um, practice. All right, shake those legs out. Okay, let's do a little bit of bridging. Uh, you will definitely move your pillow and towel out of the way this time. Your feet are planted. You might have your heels a little bit closer to the bum. Let's try, um, we're going to roll up into a bridge. Once you're up in your bridge, if you find you have too much strain through the, the fronts of the thighs, the quads, and maybe some cramping in your uh, hamstrings, uh, just you can bring your feet out a little bit further. So test what works for you. So starting, your hands are going to be on the floor, palms facing the ceiling, and we're going to roll the lower back into the floor and keep on rolling to actually lift the bum up off the floor, go up into a nice bridge, knees are pointed long, your glutes are really working, and you're rolling that lower rib, this guy right here, closer to the hip bone. That's to avoid sort of arching up and having your ribs pop towards the sky. Now let's roll that down one vertebrae at a time. And let's roll up again. Hold it up here a moment. Just to make sure you've got everything in position and your weight is still nicely carried through your shoulder and upper back. And roll down. All right, this time we're going to roll up. Find that position. And then your arms are going to come up 
overhead. They may or may not touch the floor behind you. And then you're gonna leave the arms in that position as you slowly roll the spine down one vertebrae at a time. It might be a little more difficult here to actually touch one vertebrae or have one vertebrae come down at a time. Once you're down, arms come back. Let's roll up again, rolling up into that nice strong bridge. Then the arms come up overhead. Keep the arms there as you roll down. Bring the arms back. Roll into your bridge again. And bring the arms up overhead. Hold them there and roll down. And bring the arms down. And bring your knees in to relax. All right, let's come over into side line. So you're going to come on to your side for a little bit of hip work. Might want your pillow again, cushion your head. So the knees are bent at about a um, 45 degree angle. We're going to, your hand can be on the floor to support you. Uh, if it is, make sure that top shoulder is open. We're trying to avoid a caving in feel to it here. So make sure it's nice and open, nice open chest. And you're going to lift that top leg. And from here, you're going to do circles. Trying to really get movement through all parts of that hip joint as you circle. Your leg stays in that bent knee position as you circle. Trying to keep the body straight and from rolling. And to do that, you'll be using your abs a little bit. So engage those abdominals, probably about a 30% effort maybe. Let's take that circle into the other direction. And two more times here. And bring that down. You can actually take a moment to relax that hip by slipping one knee over the other one. All right, that same leg is going to come out long. Keep it at about hip height for the moment. And then lift it up a little bit higher. And then moving it toward the front, try to touch the floor toward the front of you a little bit. Lift that leg into an arc form again. And then come around and See if you can destroy the plant that's down at the end of your feet and touch down behind you. And let's bring it up again. And touch front. Let's carry it into a nice arc, a nice high arc through the middle. And down behind you. Let's do that one more time. Front and back. We're going to come up. Get nice and high up and then point to the front and then lift it and bring it back. And release that leg, relax it, give it a little bit of a rub. All right, one more little series on this side. You know, the objective of most of these classes uh, it weighs strongly on the hips. So we've done quite a bit this class to do that, but we also do uh, the full body experience. All right, the leg is going to go long. Bring your heel back a little bit. And from this position, lift the leg and lower. So simply lift and lower. You're using the muscles around the hip joint to do this. Sometimes if we get a little bit too much speed and momentum, we kind of jerk up. And in that case, we're actually using some of the waist to get it up there. In this case, we're doing it slowly and concentrating on having the movement come from the hip. 
All right, this time when it comes down, I'd like you to turn your foot more toward the ceiling as you lift and lower. So the foot's gonna stay in that position where the toes are pointed toward the ceiling. Heels might be a little bit toward the floor. And let's do one more in this position. Now, without putting the foot down, turn the foot so the toes would point toward the floor and lift with the heel leading toward the ceiling and lower. Lift and lower. Lift. Two more times. Good, and bring that down and relax it. I think that one's due for a little massage. All right, let's roll over to the other side. Same position, we're on our side. Knees are bent. The hips are stacked. This is something um, that bears repeating. Um, we don't want the top hip to sort of slide behind, either to start or as we do our work here. So we start with the hips right one over the other. So we're gonna lift that top leg and keeping this nicely stabilized, we're gonna move that knee into circles, nice slow circles in the air. And one more time in this direction. And now let's turn that direction. I feel a whole lot easier going in one direction than the other. I notice the difference. Trying to keep the core nice and strong as you do this as well, so that your body's not rolling all over the place. Let's finish this one and bring it down and relax. One knee can slip over the other one if that feels good. All right. Leg comes out nice and long first, and then bring it a little bit higher. And from here, you're going to bring the foot forward and touch the floor toward the front, up through the air, arcing to bring the foot back. You may or may not touch the floor. Don't worry about whether you do or not. Just work with whatever range you're offered. Up in the air, to touch forward. And slowly to the back position. And let's do that again. And there, and one more time, bringing it up, getting some height as you go through that middle portion, pointing, bring it up again, bring it back, and relax it. All right, ready for the last one? Let's bring it forward and bring it long. And then bring the heel back a little bit. The reason we're bringing the heel back a little bit is we often think the leg is straight, um, but it tends not to be. We get a little bit of an angle happening here. So we're opening up through the front of that thigh by bringing that hip back and then lift and lower. Lift and lower. After the next time, we'll turn the position of the foot, toes toward the ceiling, and lead in this way, with the toes leading toward the ceiling. The leg lifts and lowers. Do a little check. See if your leg has drifted a little bit more toward the front of you. If it has, just bring it back into that position. Now let's change the foot position and lead with the heel to the ceiling and back. Two more. Last one here. 
and relax. And just take a breather here. How we're doing. All right. We are going to come on to our backs and start some stretching. And first, let's move into that pretzel stretch um, to relieve some of the muscles in the glutes. So you're going to cross one ankle over the other knee. If your leg won't go in that position, simply pull it up and just see how much of a stretch you can get back here. If you can get this cross position, think about moving the knee a little bit further away from you to start. And then if you're wanting more stretch in that glute, you can lift the lower leg and hold the position. You can always take the opportunity to explore a little bit here by moving to one side or the other side and see where you get your ideal stretch. And once you've found it, hold that one. So you can stretch in two areas here. You're getting, uh, some of you may feel it more across the, the bum and the glutes area and you may also get one through the side of the hip it should feel quite good and let's release that let's go to the other side and across here take a moment to just open up through the front of the hip in other words move that knee away a little tiny bit hold this position this, this is what you want if you want a bit more of a stretch then you're going to lift that lower leg. Find the position that works for you. And release. Let's stretch long for a moment. Flop those legs to relax. One leg is gonna stay long on the floor and you're gonna bring the other knee toward your chest. So grabbing under the thigh with your hands clasped, pull that knee toward your chest, trying to make sure it doesn't sort of go toward the other underarm. Uh, so you're trying to bring the knee straight, even if it doesn't go as far. See what your maximum position is here for that knee to the chest. Now you're going to press away from you through the thigh. So you're going to press the thigh into the hands. You get a push. Hold that for a little bit and then release it. Soften the leg a little and then see if you can get a little more range with the knee closer to the chest. And then again, let's press into those hands. Getting lots of contraction happening here through the muscles. And then release, soften the leg, and then get a little more rage. One last time, pressing into that leg. And release, and see if you can get any more. Hold that for a moment. And release that. Shake it out. Let's go to the other side. So one leg stays straight. If the leg doesn't want to stay straight, if this is too hard for you, you can always bend the knee a little bit and keep it in this position. So the knee comes toward the chest. And then press into those hands to get some tension happening. And release and see if you can get that knee to come a little bit closer. You may sort of have to work it a little bit from side to side to do that. Let's press into the hands, pressing away from you. Holding that press for about the count of five and releasing and bring it a little closer. One last time, press away. Release and bring it in a little bit more. And let's release that. Let that let that go. 
All right, let's slowly make our way to stand. Slowly and carefully. Let's stand wide for a moment. Let's soften one knee, bring it, bring the weight over toward that knee, bring the arm up overhead, and let's stretch. Take a moment to maybe press that knee toward the back of you. And come out of that. Let's go to the other side. Carrying that weight over to that side. The arm is straight. Bring that knee a little more open. And back. Let's come to center and just do a squat. So the body comes straight down here. We want to avoid leaning forward. So it's coming straight down only as far as you can. And then open those knees up toward the back. Chest is nice and open as well. Hold that, maybe move up a little bit, and down a little bit, a couple of times. Maybe you'll go a little lower one more time. Opening the knees, getting a nice stretch through the inner thigh and come out of that. Walk those feet in. All right. Let's see what we can do to relax through the shoulders and stretch a little bit there. So let's just press the hands, put the hands together and press away from us. Pressing low to start. The shoulders come down, the shoulder blades come down. And if it feels good, you can move your hands upward. Only as high as is comfortable for you through the shoulders and neck. And come out of that. Bring the hands behind you, same kind of position. So the shoulders come together, shoulder blades come together. Shoulders get pressed down and the knuckles go toward the floor and hold that position. And release. Let's just roll the shoulders in toward each other as if you're trying to get a U shape happening through the chest and then open the shoulders wide and bring the shoulder blades together. Actually, let's take that into a full standing cat and cow. So you're going to reach out wide to embrace that beach ball. And you're going to look down and the knees are soft, the lower back is rounded. Hold that for a moment. And come out of that, press the fingertips down, bringing the shoulder blades a little tiny bit together. Let's do that one more time. So let's get around that big beach ball. And let's come out of that, pressing the fingertips down, palms are forward. All right, let's just relax a tiny bit through the neck. So let's look over one shoulder and hold it. Do a little check here to see if you think your chin is tilting up or down. See if you can keep it as uh, level as possible. It's hard to tell actually unless you're looking in a mirror and you can't look in the mirror because you're looking sideways. <laughs> anyway, bring the head back to center and over to the other shoulder. Center and just drop that chin toward the chest. And come back. Let's reach. You can stand a little bit further than hip width apart. Reach one hand up. And then reach higher and higher. Reach as high as you can. And then once you've reached the height of that, bring it over to the side. So you're moving your hip out toward the side, getting a really long move for stretch through the side of the body here. The arm is straight to encourage that stretch. Let's take a deep breath here to get some movement in those lungs, in the ribs. Now 
come out of that, you can do a little tiny bit of a tilt forward and sweep the arm around, come back. Let's bring the other arm straight up overhead. Reach, try to reach those fingertips closer to the ceiling. Once you've got your maximum reach, bring it over to the side. The hip can go out to the side a little bit. Take a deep breath here. And to release it, we're going to do a little kind of pivot forward and sweep around. This is the perfect segue into our three deep breaths to end the class. So here we go. Digging deep, filling the lungs, bringing that back two more times. And last time. And we're done this week's class. So you can join us again next Wednesday if you're up for it. Thanks for coming.